Hey everyone, Dan Takashi here. Today, US markets, we saw the Dow Jones is down about 1.44%. S&P 500 fell about 1.63%. You might think, okay, another day in the markets, we're down today, things fell. No, actually, there's something weird going on in the options market. And it is showing signs of danger right now. There's a lot going on right now, not just with Trump and Biden, and the new stimulus bill coronavirus but the u.s markets are starting to price something in and it's something that you can't see just in the numbers here it's going on in the options market today i want to show you and explain to you and give you my opinion on all of this in a 10 to 15 minute youtube video for those of you new to my channel my name is dan i'm a former wall street guy former hedge fund guy traveled the world then came back to tokyo japan where i was born just started youtube this year the japanese channel january and the channel that you're watching right now i just started a few months ago would appreciate if you press the button below subscribe follow me going forward today's theme i'm going to break up into four main topics number one give a brief overview just what's going on right now in the news there's a lot i know there's a lot it's overwhelming it's exhausting yes i know but let's do a brief summary quick rundown i'll just spend a few minutes coronavirus trump and biden and this new stimulus bill that's coming out in the u.s and number two let's go right into the charts with the u.s markets especially looking at the dow and the s p 500 how do the charts look then number three this is the crux of today's theme and today's video it's the options market i'm going to talk a little bit more complicated lingo today about skew and implied ability and show you why i think things look a bit dangerous right now as they have just started to change the last few days and last but not least i'll give you my opinion as usual on what i think you should do with your money going forward with the stock markets so let's get started first and foremost guys just as a timestamp, right now it is let's do an update here i have to refresh my time it is october 20th and it is 3 15 p.m japan time it says singapore but i'm in japan right now so the first thing that i want to talk about is let's talk about all this news that's going on i guess you guys have heard obviously trump and biden are going to go into their last and third debate on october 22nd u.s time then microphones will be muted because both of them are acting like children for the most part <laughs> it's a bit of a mess and into the election there's a lot of political stuff going on probably the biggest news the next 24 hours is the news and the fact that the right now the democrats and the republicans are trying to put together a last minute bill to uh provide stimulus to the economy before the election now house speaker nancy pelosi and treasury secretary steve mukin is going forward trying to get this deal done before tuesday to bring a new stimulus bill right now they still can't seem to agree on the numbers uh the democrats were asking for 2.2 trillion the white house and the republicans were asking for about 1.88 trillion uh it seems that nancy pelosi has set a deadline for tuesday uh indicating that she wants this done before tuesday we don't know yet whether this is uh for the intention of the u.s or it's because she wants to make this a very difficult deadline on purpose so that uh it's probably unlikely that this passes but even if this gets through the house it seems that it's going to be difficult that this is also going to get through the senate as well uh just the gop controlled senate right now it seems that it's going to be difficult to get the necessary votes so this seems like this might be a tricky situation in terms of coronavirus daily new cases in the u.s we're right now breaking again 50,000, anywhere between 50,000 to 70,000 new cases a day right now it is not quite as bad as it was during the peak in july when we were getting 75 70,000 cases per day in the middle of july but right now it seems like looking at the charts we are getting close to back above the highs that we saw in july so overall right now lots of tension politically and with coronavirus that's what's going on right now for the most part in the u.s let's get right into number two let's look at the charts now guys looking at the charts if you don't understand the lingo that i'm talking about please see the below videos in the description area it's just going to be a better use of your time i'm not trying to sell you my videos i don't make that much from these videos guys it's more better use of your time so you know what i'm talking about short-term investing long-term investing macd rsi bollinger band you got to know these basics otherwise this is not going to be a good use of your time let's get right into the charts here spx this is probably the most important chart for the 
US market. I know a lot of people focus on the Dow, but guys, the Dow is price weighted. It's not as many stocks. The SPX, S&P 500 is 500 stocks. And right off bat, looking at this chart pattern, I don't like it because this looks like a potential double top. This looks like to me, the first top was on September 2nd and the, the second top right here looks like around October uh, 12th right now. And right now, Yesterday, well, today's, well, whatever you want to call it. Yesterday's market, 19th, U.S. time was down 1.6%, indicating not just down 1.6%, but it was a bit of a bearish engulfer. It was engulfing the last two days. So a bearish engulfer going down on top of the fact that this looks like right now the second head of a double top indicates to me a bit of a danger. If this goes down from here, this would be a double top pattern, not a good indicator. Looking at the volume, it wasn't a huge amount of volume, but then we look at the MACD here. MACD, we're seeing a cross right now. Right now, guys, I am using the parameters 8, 18, and 6 for the MACD, which has, for the most part, been a pretty good indicator for the MACD, the S&P 500 for the last six months. It's showing right now the blue going through the orange, showing that there is a downtrend signal at the moment. Now, looking at the RSI here, the RSI is starting to trend down and we're seeing a trend down right now short term as it looks like it's about to break 50, but also a little bit more medium term right now as you're seeing a declining top here. So declining top in the RSI and a decline top, top in the actual charts to me indicate that this looks a little bit dangerous right now in the charts for the S&P 500. Okay, now let's get into the third part, the crux of this video, the options market. So before I get into this, just as a brief overview as general, what the heck is an option? Guys, options are, as the name says, it's an option. We can see here on Investopedia, it is financial instruments and they are derivatives based on the value of underlying securities such as stocks. It gives the, uh, it's a contract. It gives the person, the, or the buyer, the opportunity to buy or sell at a future date, depending on the type of contract they'd hold, the underlying asset. So basically, you want to buy a stock in the future. You want to sell a stock in the future, but you want the right and you want to lock in the right today, right now. That's when you purchase options. Now, you can buy options for uh, calls, which is giving you the right to buy a stock in the future, and you can buy options for puts, which is the right to sell in the future. And there's all sorts of ways of combining these, and sometimes you're not just buying calls and puts, but you can sell calls and puts into all sorts of different structures. This is what's called the structured options market. There's a whole desk on this on Wall Street. There's a lot of teams based on this. And just to guys give you a brief calculation here, when you're looking at call options, which is the right to buy an option, it's basically this chart in the upper left, where you are for the most part, the X is the strike price, profit and loss is the y, a y axis, and the X axis is the actual stock price. So let's say we're looking at a stock, and right now the price of the stock is let's say $1,000. Let's say it's $1,000, and you want the right to buy at the current price $1,000 in the future and you buy a call, and let's say the call, it cost $100. So the stock price right now is at 1,000, but you've already spent 100, let's say. For you to break even, the price of the stock must go to 1,100, and then anything above that, you're making money because you have the right to buy at 1,000, you've already spent 100, so your all-in cost is 1,100. If the stock price goes above, let's say to 1,200, 1,300, you're making money. Put option is the opposite. You have the right to sell in the future, so you want generally the stock price to go down. Let's say the price is again 1,000, and you're spending $100 on a put option. So your break even will be $900. You've spent $100, the current price is 1,000. Let's say your strike price in the future is 1,000. So the price, let's say, goes to $900, you've broken even because this price that you have the right to sell is 1,000, but you've already spent 100 bucks. So if it goes to 800, you start making money, $700, you're making money, et cetera, et cetera. This is the very, very basic of options. And when you price options, 
it's a very complicated formula. It's called usually a Black-Scholes formula. There's a lot of different formulas. For the most part, in my experience, talking to a lot of my friends who are professional options traders, they've been doing this for a living, they use something that's similar to a Black-Scholes model. And looking at a Black-Scholes model, at least based whether it's a call or a put, one of the very key underlying variables is called volatility of the asset. Volatility just means how much is the stock moving? Because it's an option, when you look at an option, when the volatility is high up and down, usually your option is worth more. Why? Because it's like a lotto ticket. You don't know whether you're going to be able to use the option or not, but if the stock is moving all over the place, higher chances that at some point before the option expires, the price will go into an area which is profitable for you. And therefore, that's why usually when the volatility is higher, that means the option price is higher. Now, why am I talking to you about all this gibberish? Well, it's not gibberish, but because right now I want to explain to you the right now volatility that's going on in the options market. So looking at, again, this formula here, this is the formula for options and one of the key variables is called volatility. Now, when you look at volatility in the options market, it's usually called implied volatility. Implied volatility means right now how much volatility is being priced in to the market. Now, looking at the implied volatility, we want to look at the implied volatility for the entire US market, let's say the S&P 500 index. Now, how do we do this? I like to usually look at the ETF for SPX with the most common ETF is usually SPY. Spider 500 Trust is one of the largest ETFs in the world. And I usually look at this as well for volume. And looking at this, as we can see, it looks like the exact same chart as it tracks the S&P 500. Now, we wanna look at the implied volatility for this. Now, first let's look at implied volatility for this SPY. Uh, looking at implied volatility hopefully this website works yep it's working great the first thing i see here is the implied 30 day volatility so again this is the implied volatility right now in the price and we're seeing here and what worries me is the implied volatility is notching up let's zoom in a little bit here so you can probably see better you see this here it put in a bottom here around October, uh, sorry, August 25th. And it's been notching up, notching up, notching up. This almost looks like a breakout pattern. It's tried to test right here, this implied volatility level, it's around 25. And it's tried to test it one, two, three. And this is its fourth try. If it breaks above here, this will be a breakout chart pattern on the implied volatility for SPY. Meaning that for the most part, option traders are pricing in higher volatility for the future for the overall US market. And if this breaks out, just like any breakout chart for any chart, there will be people, there are professionals who trade implied volatility, just like you and I trade stocks, just like you and I may trade FX or other variables, there are professional options traders who trade implied volatility. They see a breakout, they will go in and they will try and go for a quick punt and try to bet on the implied volatility going up even higher. Now, this is worrisome because option traders are usually pricing in something maybe that we don't know. They could just be gambling for the most part. Probably not, given the fact that this is a very large index. It is the S&P 500. Now, the second thing that worries me in the option market is looking at the difference between puts and call options. Now, we often see this as called the SKU, but the SKU, there's many different types of SKU. Right now, I'm gonna show you the SKU right now between puts and calls. So this is a 25 delta put and a 25 delta call. The difference between these two basically means, guys, a put option, as we said before, is the right to sell in the future. The call option is the right to buy in the future. These are both opposites, right? Usually, Usually, when you're buying, when the market, there's more demand for buying puts than calls, it means the market is getting more worried. Option traders are becoming more worried. And this is exactly what's happening right now. As we can see right now, this is called a put 
call spread and looking here at this green line it is notching up higher and this is clearly in an uptrend right now short term right now showing that there's an increased demand for puts over calls at the moment and the spread right here is going up so implied volatility is going up and the demand for puts right now is larger than calls indicating to me that the option market is signaling danger short term this is no surprise to me as we're going into a very big presidential election okay so now last and fourth part of this video what should you do with your money after listening to all this stuff uh, as usual guys investing is and always will be self-responsibility i have to say this over and over and over please make your own decisions i'm one youtuber one analyst one brain you got to take this with a grain of salt and write down your own plan and make your own decisions and guys today i'm going to be talking short term for more details on the difference between long term and short term investing see my previous videos today we're talking short term so this is only 30 to 10 percent of your net worth few days to a few months follow the trends and maximum five to ten percent net worth per idea my general overall feel and recommendation right now is the u.s markets do look dangerous the chart right now is showing a downward trend clearly this is a double top it's a dangerous double top and the macd and the rsi are both showing danger right now on top of this we just showed volatility is going up the skew is going up and implied volatility itself is going up right now for the s p 500 it's coming off of a low base still going up right now i think that this is going to continue to go up and right now is a time at least in the u.s markets where you should be getting out of a lot of long positions maybe it may be safe to hold on to a little bit of shorts but stay hedged uh, right now, I have cut almost all of my position in the U.S. bank stock XLF. I'm going to do a separate video on this tomorrow because uh, there's just a lot going on in the bank sector. But a lot of other positions I have been cutting and I hold very, very small positions such as uh, just a little bit left in, let's say, XLF. Uh, also a little bit left and let's say short positions such as Netflix, NVIDIA, uh, and a little bit long position in Google. Aside from that, not much in US stocks and I'm holding a lot of cash and just sitting and waiting short term because it's the US election. Things are getting crazy. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on and the charts and the option markets to me are showing that things are dangerous right now. Things could change at any single moment with any piece of news somebody gets coronavirus somebody gets hurt there's something crazy happens in the debate or something happens with the polls or the stimulus plan goes up or down i mean who knows what happens but clearly the markets are not happy with this so i think you stay away maybe be a little bit net short as in if you're going to hold long positions be a little bit more net short stay safe if you're in doubt just do nothing it's just a few weeks wait until after the election do nothing there's nothing wrong with doing nothing that is the overall line strategy i talk about thanks again guys for watching my video if you enjoyed today's content please press the thumbs up button below and press the like button also guys if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe to my channel below with a button below would also guys appreciate if you send my channel link to any of your friends and buddies as a recommendation thanks so much guys hope you guys have a safe week stay uh, hydrated stay healthy and i will report again tomorrow i'm going to talk specifically probably about the bank stocks as they are starting to move in a very interesting direction right now thanks again guys adios see you later